bit is from here to the end of the card. And then here's another example of a 64-bit card. Uh, just by looking at this, can you tell me if it's 3-volt, 5-volt, or universal? Well, here's my notch towards the end. Remember, this is where my 64 bits start, so they go out here to the end. That doesn't have anything to do with power, so that's no help to me. Uh, here, I've got something there, but there's no real notch there. I only have another notch right here. Remember what that is? The one that's closer to the bracket back here is 3.3 volts. So that's what this is. It's a 3.3 volt 64-bit card. And again, it's another adaptic SCSI card. And again, SCSI cards are good candidates for 64-bit because of the high throughput they need. And another thing that you might see there would be things such as uh, high-end network cards, server network cards. Some of the server network cards will have multiple ports on them so that you can plug in multiple network cables into that single network card and get a lot of throughput uh, through that card. And then moving on to AGP, here's an example of an AGP slot right here. AGP. Uh, notice that it, its distinctive look is the fact that it's further from the, mother, the back of the motherboard and where you would install items. So there's a greater gap here between the back of the computer and the start of the slot compared to things like your PCI slots. And there's also a bracket holder here or a tab retainer that we'll take a look at here in a little while as well. When it comes to AGP, uh, one of the more useful documents that I've found is this diagram that identifies the various types of AGP keys. And so you can identify what kind of voltage it supports. Uh, here's the AGP card, and of course if it's notched out here, that means it's a 3.3 volt key. Notched out here, it's 1.5 volt. The slot that we just looked at in the diagram uh, is, or rather in the photograph I just showed you, we can see is an AGP universal because it doesn't have any keying in it. Most slots these days in any of the current motherboards are going to be AGP universal, but there might be some older ones that are keyed. And these, of course, these keys are a little exaggerated for, for emphasis so that you can see more clearly how they're keyed. And moving on down here, we can also see that we have AGP Pro here. Notice that there's also a universal slot here that would take AGP Pro 3.3 volt or 1.5 volt. And then there's keying for those exact voltages there as well. Here's an example of an old uh, AGP 4X card that I've got. It's just <laughs> one of those cards that kind of wound up in the, in the bin that I've got a whole bunch of other expansion cards in there. I'm not really quite sure where this came from. Probably I've got a customer somewhere that wonders where this card is. But anyway, I guess better sell this thing on eBay quick before I get caught with the goods. But you see that we have two slots here, rather two notches. This is going to designate this as a universal card because, again, the back notch there is 3.3 volts. And the one up here cl tw closer towards the front, 1.5 volts. Now here, let's go ahead and talk about the tab or a training retaining bracket that I started to allude to earlier. Look at this part of the AGP card. This is designed to slip inside of the tab so that this card does not walk out of the slot. We found that during transportation, a lot of the computers that would be shipped with AGP before they had this tab here, uh, earlier versions of AGP would start to slip out of the motherboard slot in transit. And the design of this the retaining bracket here, this tab, also known as a register, is to make sure that it stays inside the slot. And then I just took that AGP 4X card that we just saw in the previous picture, I inserted it into the AGP slot that we looked at earlier, and from the back side of this bracket here, you can see that there's a kind of a clip under here. We'll look at the other side of this in just a moment. And if I wanted to take this AGP card out of the slot, I would have to take my thumb and pull back on this retaining bracket right there. And then, of course, I will have unscrewed the bracket as well, and then apply upward pressure on the card to remove it from the slot. And then the other side of it, from the other direction, uh, for the flip side of this, we can see that, again, that that kind of tab here slips into this little slot and it's able to retain the card in the location. And again, going back to our uh, previous graphic here, that's again because of this great distance here, uh, they found that it was easily walking out of the slot without this retention. Then let's look at another iteration of PCI, and this is the PCI Express, and this would be PCI Express. There's one slot there. It's not really in view here. It's kind of cut off in the picture, but you can see by looking at the imprint on the motherboard here that there's a PCI Express 1 slot there. This is my PCI Express 2 slot, so I've got two of these by one PCI Express slots. 
you might look at that and say, great, Scott, that's pretty small. I mean, there's not much you could do with that, is there? <laughs> well, remember, the PCI Express implementation here uh, in the first implementation is good for 250 megabytes worth of data throughput, which is a lot better than we had with earlier versions of PCI. And if we take a look at an adapter here, this is an example. This would be a serial ATA adapter that I can install into a, a computer to provide for myself support for serial ATA devices, usually going to be hard drives. And you can see here, there's a pretty small connector that we've got there. Uh, just the fact that it's small, don't let that fool you. Electrically, the design is superior, and it's going to still give you a pretty good bandwidth. Here's another graphic of PCI Express. This particular one, notice that's a little bit longer slot than this small one we saw just a moment ago. This one is a PCI Express by 4. So it uses four lanes as opposed to the single lane in the previous slot and device that we looked at just a moment ago. Now, as I mentioned a little while ago, AGP, even up to 8X, could only go so far in terms of its design. So what most motherboard manufacturers and video cards uh, manufacturers are doing now for the future of video is they're going to PCI Express by 16 or using 16 lanes for video data. And so in this motherboard, for example, I have a, a slot right here that's an AGP or a um, PCI Express by 16. Notice it also has a retaining bracket here so that it can lock the card into place. And what we have with this then is the ability to put in very high speed video cards into this. Let's just go ahead and take a look at form factors here. Notice also, by the way, there's only a single key in any of the PCI Express. There's not a 1.5 volt, 3.3 volt, 5 volt, all of those different sorts of things. And then here's an example of a PCI Express by 16 card. This is a high-end ATI graphics card. And we see that if it's into the key, they're using the notch. And there's the retention mechanism over on the end. A lot of video cards these days have dual video out so that you can hook up two monitors to a single video card. And there's also an additional technology that you can use. And that is that, is that you can kind of gang two video cards together. This motherboard that these two video cards are in has two PCI Express by 16 uh, slots, and you put a connector. Let me go back to our previous graphic there, and you'll see this. Notice there's a connector up here at the top of this video card. You use that connector to con chain these two video cards together, and as a result, you can get the aggregate performance of both video cards through one set of outputs and get extremely high performance. And NVIDIA has a similar thing that it also does. Let me go back to this graphic here. Uh, with this one, I can take uh, two video cards. I can put one here and one here. They both have to be identical, or at least ideally, if you want to confirm that they're going to work properly. And then what I would do is I would flip this around. I don't know if you can read that, but on one side it says single video card, and it slides in this way into this slot. And then if I put in two video cards that are identical, I would just simply remove this little card here, flip it around, and put this end of it in too, the slot instead, and then it would be that it would instruct the motherboard to use the performance of both video cards uh, to send data out of the um, video out on this card. And then here's just a better look at an actual video card. This is one of the ones that I took out of my own computer here. And again, we can see the kind of connector it is here and the, the kind of video outs that it has. Uh, a lot of them will also include S-Video. That's what that connector is at the top there. And then here's a closer look at the actual connector itself and the contacts down at the bottom. In this nugget, we discussed buses, and we took a look, first of all, at some key terms such as megahertz, gigahertz. We also looked at bit or byte width, and we also took a look at the bandwidth and how all those things factor together. We start off with our peripherals, with the peripheral components interface, and we saw that it can only go so far because it's a parallel technology. The PCI initial versions that we saw were only 33 megahertz. Then we went to faster versions, including the PCI X versions of the peripheral components interface. And then now we currently have PCI Express, which is appearing on newer motherboards and will probably eventually replace PCI altogether. Uh, PCI Express is primarily used also at this time in the by 16 version to replace the aging AGP specification, which at 8X is pretty well maxed out. Well, after all of this jabber, and I've worked up quite a thirst, so I'm going to go into the kitchen and rummage around in those cabinets and somewhere, hopefully, find a drinking glass and have a cold drink of water. Well, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.